This video is going to describe how to wrap. Now the wrap we're going to put on today is the same wrap you're getting on your treatment day and it's the same wrap you're going to use on day three or three days after your treatment because you need to rewrap on day three. Now you will rewrap on day seven and then you'll rewrap every two to three days after that until day 21. But first we'll focus on the wrap you're getting on your treatment day which is the same as the wrap you're going to put on three days later. And then we'll discuss the differences on the day seven wrap, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Now step one is you'll notice that I made an entry point here is to put your toe pads, there's a toe pad, underneath the glands right over here, okay? You see that? You're gonna put two of them on top of each other and I'll show you how to do this in a moment. Two of them on top of each other. Now you could trim these a little bit if they're too big, okay? You could trim, the, trim them if they're too big. So let me show you how to put the toe pad on. You go under the glands, okay? Just under, and kind of form, shape it right there. You see how that is? Now if this is too big, you can always trim a little bit with a scissor. You can cut the, these legs off if it's too big. But otherwise, it looks like it usually fits on most patients there. And we're gonna put another one on top. Of course, you try to center it the best you can. And we'll put that underneath just like that. And it usually sticks pretty well, okay? So there's your toe pad. That's the second step. Now, the third step, you're going to take these large band-aids, let's open them up. All right, and let's, uh, we'll open up two together and I'll show you why. You're gonna first cut them. All right, you're gonna grab a scissor. I got my scissor. Now, if there's two band, there's gonna be several band-aids for you, but these two large band-aids, put them together, okay? And just make little cuts, okay? About, about a half inch long. Okay, just cut into the Band-Aid about five times on one side and turn it around. And then carefully, another five. And I'll show you why we're doing this. So you could see now, you see how I cut them, right? You see how they're cut. They'll be they're easier to place on a curved surface and you'll see that in a moment. Okay. So we, what did we do so far? We glued down our Band-Aid. We put our toe pads underneath the glands. And now we're gonna put our Band-Aids on. Now carefully, take these off, because it's a little different now, because they're cut. You see how it's coming off like that? So you gotta pull them off nice and easy, so it doesn't tear, because it's cut, okay? And, and you can see why. We have a little sticky part here. Now, the first Band-Aid, is going to go, now it can fit either way. It can go this way or this way, depending on uh, the size of the area and whatever we're covering, okay? So for all intents and purposes for this demonstration, I'm gonna put it long ways. Now how we're gonna do it is this. I want this part to go on the pubic area. Now the pubic area, you can't see it, but it's, it's here, right? So we're gonna put this down on the curved surface of the penile shaft on the front side and this here, if you were to imagine, the pubic skin would be here. So that's how your Band-Aid would look. It would curve up onto the pubic surface, okay? Now, let's do the second Band-Aid. Again, carefully remove it. Carefully remove it. Okay, that's that part. Let's take this off. Now this is where it's very, very important because these cuts uh, a more important for the underside area here, okay? Now this is where you're going to put the band-aid on the scrotum, the shaft, the base of the shaft, and the scrotal area. So you're gonna move this right into that joint. You see that, okay? And you're going to press this in nice and easy and let it stay flush. And that is how it's going to curve onto the area, okay? It'll be better seated when the other components are on to put pressure on it, okay? 
All right, so you have your Band-Aids on. Okay. Now, the next step is putting your triamcinolone cream on. Okay. Triamcinolone cream is a steroid that cools the skin down. So you're going to take some of this and put it on the surface here and rub it on, even the glands, rub it on every visible surface of skin that's not covered, even on the scrotum here, okay, wherever you can, and get it all covered. Thin coat is fine, okay, a thin coat is fine. Now the next step is you take your brown stretch gauze, okay, take a good length of this. If you take extra, don't worry, you can always just cut it. Now, we like to start at the base area here, okay? Start at the base and, and work your way around. Overlap minimally 50%. Let me show you how the overlapping works. If you see, that is about 50% overlap. Now, if your if you're rec length is five inches, let's say five and a half to six inches or greater, I want you to overlap more, like 80% because you might need a stiffer bandage to prevent bending of the shaft when you get a little swollen, okay? So we're gonna right now, we're gonna do about 50% or so, and we're gonna work our way around with mild tension. It's not a lot of tension. Because remember, when you sleep at night, you might have an erection, and we need expansion room. That's why this cannot be tight. It's just gently placed. It's not falling off, it's just it's snug. I'm probably overlapping about 60%, and we just keep on going, if you notice. We keep on going around, and we're going to go over those toe pads. That'll help secure them. All right, this sticks to itself, as you can see. You just do that. And now, watch, I'm going to go just on the lip of the glands here, and I'm going to start working my way up. I'll go around again and I'll work my way up. A little, little more tension here, you could do a little more, and then come down. And then I could break this off. We don't need that. And then I'll take a little piece of tape. You have the white tape. And we're gonna put a little piece of tape where that ended, okay? That'll secure it. All right, so far you have your wrap here. Then you take some blue, a length of blue. This is blue pre-wrap. And this goes at the base. So you're just gonna wind this around loosely about eight times or so. This is for cushion, cushioning only, okay? So then you go around around eight times there. You get a little piece of tape to secure it. Okay, and then there's that. Now what you want to do is add a little more brown to connect these two pieces so there's no joint space opening here, okay? So let's get some more. Let's get some more brown. Let's see if there's, there's not enough there. Let's open a new roll. Okay. Now this brown stretch gauze only goes a little bit, uh, about halfway up. So you want to put the brown on top of the blue. That's where you're going to start. And this band-aid should stick better because this is not human skin here. You work your way and notice I'm going to leave a visible edge of blue. See that little blue? Okay, see the blue edge? That's for comfort because if the brown gauze is touching the skin it might irritate and cut it. All right, so here we're going to roll, we're going to take our brown stretch and we're going to now connect these two components together and I'll go up to right around here. That's about it, that's all you need. And I'll just take the rest off, we don't need. And we'll put a little piece of tape to secure that, okay? All right, so the next part, okay, we have our brown stretch gauze that connected those two, okay? Now, we have our tight half fold. Okay, let's talk about this for a moment. What is a half fold? A half fold is this brown gauze folded in half. So we're going to fold this in half. It sticks together. Notice how I'm doing that. I'm just folding it and st it gets sticks to itself and we're going to make a half fold. Okay, 
Take your time. We usually provide these, but just in case you need to make another one, you know how to make it. You see what I'm doing. So that is now a half fold, okay? Now, the half fold at the base is very important. That's part of your tight constrictive area, okay? We call it a barrier, okay? It's part of your barrier mechanism, right? So we're going to put this on, leave the blue edge, remember, and we're going to go with moderate tension. This is too tight. See what I'm doing? Don't do that. Just moderate tension around. You'll see how we do it when you're there. All right, you go around twice. Okay, you go around twice. Moderate tension. And right about there. So I'm going to cut the, the extra off. And there we have it. And I'm going to put a piece of tape to hold it in place. And there you have your half fold. Now this is, we, we call this the tight half fold because this is part of your barrier at the base, okay? Next step is your rubber band. You're gonna have a few of these that are looped together, two rubber bands, okay? And there's a reason for that and I'll tell you that in a moment. I'll tell you why in a moment. The rubber band will drop down and it'll go on your half fold, okay? Now what we like to do with the rubber band is place it in a certain position, okay? And then every four to six hours, this rubber band gets removed for 10 minutes or 15 minutes, then it gets placed back on. But every time you do that, I want you to place it on a different location. Because if it stays on the same spot all the time, it irritates the skin underneath. So for example, if I leave it like this, let's say it's time to take a break. You take this off, okay, 10 minutes passes. Then you're gonna place this back on. Now I'm going to say, well, I don't want it in the exact same area, so what I'll do is I'll lower this here, make this a little lower, and maybe this a little higher. So see how I'm doing that. So you see how it's higher there and lower there. Then if you're going to do another break four to six hours later, you take it off for 10 to 15 minutes, and then you can move this higher and this lower. Okay, just keep it moving. Don't keep it on the same spot all the time, okay? But mainly keep it on this half fold. That's very important, all right? Now, there is another half fold involved and that provides a little support under the gland. So let's make another half fold. And this again goes around twice. Sometimes it helps to use a scissor. Okay. We're going to make another one. Again, you might have these prepared for you already, but if you don't, you know how to make them. So here's my half fold. As you can see how I'm making that. Okay, now we start the half fold on the glands. Again, my, this is mild tension. This is not a restrictive barrier situation, okay? This is just for support. We start it on top of the glands. You see, it? Here's, we're not starting it on the shaft, okay? We're not starting it on the shaft. We're starting it on the glands. Now, if you're not circumcised, you do start it on the shaft. Okay, because that's where the foreskin will drop down and you want more pressure there. But let's start with those who are circumcised. You're going to start on the top here. And then you're going to what? Swoop down. See how I'm swooping down? I come back up. And I swoop not as much. And if I have a little more, if I have a little extra turn here, I'll just stop right there. Okay. Now notice on the front side, the half fold is directly on the glands, but on the underside, it's swooped down where my fingers are. Why? Because that's going to add support to prevent filler from shifting into this area. This is a vulnerable area, a susceptible area, a high risk area for the filler to cause a bulging effect here. That's why we have to protect it. Okay? And that's that part. Now, if you were, uh, if you're not circumcised, what we do is we put the half fold underneath the glands entirely with moderate tension. That's only for those who are not circumcised because the foreskin drops down. We need to keep it in place with pressure. That's different. So those who are not circumcised will do that. But for everyone else, you do the swoop method where you swoop down like I did here. Okay. Now, uh, the next step is the plastic ring placement. Okay. The plastic ring is basically this. The plastic ring is this device, okay? 
that that opens. This is important for you to remember because this opens and you have to look for the joint here. Okay, there's a little pin and this opens like this, okay? So this here closes down on the base and it, it should only be snug on the base, okay? Only be snug. And if I were to put this in, but I'm going to demonstrate this in a different way. I want to show you how the ring goes on with the strap mechanism because the whole idea is for the ring to put so now for example it's day 21 you take everything off and all you do is very simple you start at the base very light tension you're overlapping now again if you're longer if your erections are longer you overlap more okay so here we go we're just going to put our retainer wrap on that's what this is called a retainer wrap and all it is is a simple brown stretch gauze. You just continue. Mild tension as usual. And we're going to keep on going all the way. And I ran out, so let's get some more. You're going to keep on going. Of course, get an adequate length. And continue till you go under the glands, just like that. And drop down, and that's it. That is the retainer wrap. You wear this 12 to 18 hours a day, okay? And you wear it till day 90, all right? So the, um, the wrap is very important to do correctly. And you'll be taking pictures every morning and sending them to us so we could evaluate your wrap and so forth, okay? And um, we'll be watching for a whole host of things, all right? But in essence, there is your wrap. Uh, that's how this works and hopefully this was helpful and review this video as often as you need so you could understand. Now there'll be other videos uh, with troubleshooting uh, details on how to adjust certain elements. That uh, will be something for you to review as well but this is the shorter version of how to put your wrap on.